Hey there YouTube, uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, I've really been pumping them out this week. Um, this is the um, pickups and haul video uh, that I said I was going to do. Um, oh, here comes uh, Bobo by the looks of it. What are you doing? Do you want to come back over here? Come on then, I'll lift you over. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, Bo's still here. Uh, yes, uh, pickups and haul video. Um, this is all the stuff that I've picked up uh, over the last, well, pr probably, it probably dates from like late December. Uh, some stuff um, which uh, kind of, well, I mean, I ordered it in late December, uh, but it didn't actually end up coming until sort of later in January. Um, one was due to a Royal Mail um, mess up. Uh, which I'll go into a little bit more detail on uh, uh, as I get to it. Um, and another, uh, which was a pre-order uh, from back on, uh, I think it was actually back in sort of late November, I think it was actually. Um, maybe even a couple of weeks before that. Um, <clears throat> which finally came through um, about three weeks ago. Uh, so that took a little bit of time. Uh, so, um, without further ado, we'll go down to the desk and I'll show you uh, the massive amount of stuff uh, that I've picked up uh, way more than uh, what I'd normally pick up in, in uh, an average month um, but lots of uh, variety so I'll catch you in a second okay uh, welcome down uh, to uh, my desk here uh, and we're going to go through um, all the loot that I've picked up over the last um say sort of six weeks uh, six weeks or so maybe seven um so the first thing um i'm not going to do it in, in any sort of order really uh, but the first thing is a big thank you to uh karen from the michelangelo channel uh, who was kind enough to send me a couple of uh sprues for uh cruel seas um i do actually have the base game um and it is something that um, I'm quite interested in. Uh, you know, I, I really do at some point in the future want to expand uh, into a small British and German fleet by perhaps getting the the uh, expansion, uh, the fleet boxes, uh, maybe a one or two uh, extra sh uh, extra ships on top of that. Um, so yeah, nice to have uh, you know uh, help balance out the forces with a with a British and a, a German sprue. Uh, so much appreciated, uh, and uh, yeah, go and check uh, the Michelangelo channel out, it's uh, very cool. So that's uh, that out of the way. Um, I'll just put that over there. Uh, the next thing, here comes Bobo. What are you doing? You can always tell uh, whenever I'm doing something, uh, Bo has to come and check it out. Okay, we're going to get back to the uh, video girl. There you can actually see my cruel seas. Uh, I, I tend to keep it. They, they do actually fit into the box. Uh, so that's where I'm going to keep them. Uh, okay, next up we're going to go on to... Uh, uh, I suppose this could be classed as uh, maybe the biggest uh, pickup uh, of the um, of the period. Um, really, this, this should have come uh, earlier. Um, it's basically uh, the new version of Blood Bowl. Um, I've had this, uh, I've only had this for like about three weeks. Um, I originally ordered the game um, when it came out for pre order uh, back in sort of mid, I think it was mid November. Um, but the, uh, the second item, I ordered it from uh, Goblin Games. Um, mainly because. Uh, I, you know, obviously my first choice was to go to Wayland, but for some reason Wayland were late at putting uh, putting this up uh, for pre-order on their site, and um, me being uh, slightly worried that I'd miss out on the pre-orders because they only have limited numbers, um, I decided to go to the next best place, which was uh, Goblin Games, um, and uh, basically, so I ordered this, uh, got it for a fairly good price. Um, I think the Wayland. Uh, the Wayland Games, uh, when they did actually uh, finally get up on their site, uh, actually had it for about one pound fifty cheaper. Um, 
but it's still a good price uh you know sort of a almost 20 odd quid off uh, so it's pretty good um yeah so i pre-ordered it and uh, I ordered it because uh, I think the uh, I think it's seventy nine pounds. You got to go over to get free um, free postage. Uh, I decided to order another item, and uh, so I thought, well, well, I spent actually spent ages looking, uh, and I couldn't find anything. And then in the end, I thought, well, okay, uh, bottom of the barrel time. Uh, there does happen to be a um, a particular figure uh, from the Walking Dead All Out War. Uh, booster packs uh, that I really want to get uh, so uh, and it was I think it was like 11 pounds or something like that so it's like just just the amount that I need I think I need like 10 pounds or, 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 or more to, to actually get the free shipping so I thought yeah well, you know that's uh, there's absolutely nothing else I want to get um, uh, this is the right sort of price range uh, I've got that so uh, it turned out that this thing was out of stock um, and of course uh, in typical style it took them uh, until um, the middle of January uh, to actually get it into stock again, because um, I think I think they were out of stock everywhere. Um, I think they had to. I think Mantic got a new shipment in uh, from China um, sometime in um, early January, um, and obviously it took a few weeks uh, for, for them to filter out to their uh, suppliers, I guess. Um, so yeah. Uh, Glad to have it. Uh, I am a, a, quite a big Bubble fan, um, but I'm not going to bother uh, going into it uh, for now. But that's uh, quite a nice. I'm glad to have it. And it's the first sort of Games Workshop thing that I've brought since uh, since the 90s. Okay, on to the next thing. Uh, let's go for some Dead Man's Hand stuff now. Um, so basically, uh, we have a, another gang. And we have a couple of uh, loose figures. Uh, now, there, there was a bit of a story behind these guys. Um, I ordered these, um, the I think it was the 28th of December. Um, and I know for a fact, from all the other things I've, I've had from um, Great Escape Games, that their orders come pretty quick. Um, generally, within two days. Um, so, I was kind of... But I thought, well, you know, the, the, the Royal Mail was backed up with all sorts of uh, undelivered parcels and stuff from, from earlier in, uh, around Christmas. I thought, well, you know, it's going to at least be an extra day or two um, for, 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 for this to get through. Um, so eventually, after, I think it was after three weeks, they still hadn't turned up. And, and, and uh, I thought, well, you know, um, they've got to have gone missing because there's no way... Uh, that this, you know, that, that, could, that their backlog could be that bad, um, and it was only a really small package as well. Um, so I basically contacted the company, and, and they ended up doing a an internal uh, tracking uh, search, uh, and it turned out that on the thirty first of December, um, they tried to deliver it, uh, and uh, I think it was a Saturday. Um, I was definitely up because uh, that particular um, during the sort of winter months, I, I tend to get up a little bit later because because it's cold and also my energy saps uh, quite quickly during the, during uh, the cold weather. So if I get up too early, because um, normally I, I'm up before half past eight normally, um, but uh, during the winter, if I get up at half past eight, I'm, I'm absolutely I'm, I'm out of energy by sort of eight o'clock. Um, and it makes it too long a day, so I try to uh, get up uh, a little bit later, um, towards the towards sort of like you know quarter to nine, nine o'clock, sometimes a little ten or fifteen minutes later. Um, but of course, the big uh, trouble is that it actually takes me uh, ages to actually get dressed uh, and and ready to actually sort of start the day. Um, so you're looking at an, at least an extra between half an hour to uh, an hour on top of that but again i was awake uh, my, my my bedroom's in the front of the house so if i heard you know i'd hear, I'd hear the, the the doorbell go or i'd hear a, a van pull up um nothing um and they'd supposedly tried to deliver this um so luckily i um applied for re-delivery and um it was finally delivered but 
uh, they never actually left a card to say that they tried to deliver it, so I never knew. So I thought that was a, a pretty poor, pretty poor show by the Royal Mail um, on that particular occasion. But uh, eventually they came. Uh, I was really. This has always been one of my favourite gangs uh, from the very first time I went to their website and looked and, and looked at the different gangs. Um, I the reason why I didn't uh, get it before is because uh, the, my other gangs um, I actually ended up getting in like a deal. So if you've got my gangs, my, my pile of gangs here. So we have uh, again. I've shown these before. So we have the Renegades, the Cavalry. The Pinkertons, these are Desperados, uh, and they're obviously the two boxes that came in the starter set. Um, and uh, so, I thought, you know, I bit the bullet and thought, yes, I'm going to get, I'm going to get the Daughters of the West because they're literally my favourite gang, um, and uh, they're very, very cool. So I picked those guys up, and uh, there's a quick picture of them. I think they're really cool figures. Um, so that is uh, Dead Man's Hand, Daughters of the West, and also I picked up a couple of uh, loose figures. From their single figure range, um, so we have uh, this guy here. I think I think he's called the Faceless Man, um, but he's kind of based on a character called Jonah Hex, um, and he is very cool. He comes with a, a playing card and a and his uh, special rule uh, card. And secondly, we have uh, a character called Dolores Wood. Um, now, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, Exactly who this character is based on. Um, I was kind of when I when I first saw her, I thought, um, oh, maybe she's like uh, based on the character from the sort of the main female character from uh, that series called Godless, um, which is uh, a really cool uh, Western show uh, series. Uh, if if you've got Netflix, I definitely suggest checking it out. It's basically um, about this town. Um, this small town, a uh, mining town, um, and uh, there was a, a massive accident and almost all uh, the uh, males uh, of, of the town uh, all got killed in this mining accident, so all that's left is is basically their, their, their widows and, 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 and another woman. Um, and it sort of culminates in uh, this massive uh, gunfight at the end um, which is basically like again practically all uh, females uh, defending their, their town against uh, the bad guy uh, and it's an absolutely amazing shootout uh, I think I watched it like three or four times in a row uh, that particular shootout cause it was so cool um, and uh, just looking at this particular figure uh, uh, kind of reminds me of her but then again um, on, on the flip side of that uh, I think it could also be um, possibly uh, modelled on the uh, one of the leads from uh, Westworld uh, as well, um, and that's probably more likely who it's uh, who it's based on. Um, and uh, this particular character doesn't have a playing card as such, but she does have special rules. Uh, and uh, yeah, very cool character uh, figure. As you can see there. So that's uh, Dolores Wood. So that's the figures side of Dead Man's Hand out the way. Now the final thing uh, for the Dead Man's Hand uh, section uh, is uh, I actually uh, picked up some terrain um, and uh, so basically I went to uh, Tabletop, uh, Tabletop Scenics uh, from TT Combat uh, and I picked up this uh, little pile here uh, of uh, buildings. Uh, and I, uh, I came across uh, a deal that worked out really cool. Um, so basically, um, this uh, set here uh, costs uh, under £20. And you get the Hangman's Gallows, you get a Sheriff's Office, you get a saloon, you get a bank, and you get a general store. So uh, that's you know the best part of a little western town um, for under tw for under twenty pound, uh, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so I bit the bullet, and uh, I'm pretty chuffed with them actually. Um, that's perfectly perfectly adequate for uh, for a good game. 
uh, and also you can uh, you know add your own ladders and and uh, actually um, you know uh, add a verse quite an element to it as well and of course the uh, the name boards of the uh, the shops uh, allow for cover so it'd be you know really quite cool to have uh, guys on the roofs uh, the other two things I picked up uh, was a little bit of scatter terrain uh, so we have um, some gun and ammo crates here and also a uh, stage wagon uh, which is of course uh, great for uh, scatter terrain it's quite a simple kit and both of these were pretty cheap I think this was about sort of three pounds something and this was a uh, similar sort of price maybe four pound four pound ish um, so yeah some great uh, stuff from those guys uh, another uh, rather odd thing that I picked up um, was that I watched a video on um, I can't actually remember uh, what channel it was on uh, possibly rubbish in rubbish out um, where the guy was trying um, graffiti paint uh, as a an alternate to uh, painting MDF buildings um, and, it, uh, and they seem to work really really well um, so I thought I wanted to give this a go uh, so I found a, a, a graffiti shop in uh, actually in England um, and I picked up uh, three um, cans of acrylic uh, paint um, you know, they're quite, they, they kind of look like as if they're the same colour, but they're actually not. Um, I'm trying to, I wonder if it actually says uh, what colours they are. Uh, yeah, so I've basically got um, two uh, cappuccino, which is kind of like a sort of a, a light brown, a sort of a tan brown. I thought the, the, this colour would be great for, for, for spraying buildings. And also a, uh, a cocoa, which is kind of a slightly darker uh, tone. Um, now, the cool thing about these um, is that obviously uh, these are acrylic, um, which is uh, one good thing, but the, the best thing is the price. Uh, each of these cans uh, was under £3, um, which is uh, pretty cool if you think about it. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than, uh, than hobby paint, uh, and you can actually get a, a wide range of different types of paint. Um, I think... Uh, even though these are acrylic, I think you kind of obviously need to, to wear a respirator when using them. Um, but uh, I'm really quite interested in giving these these a go because um, the price of them uh, is uh, amazing. Um, and they could well be a, a little gem, uh, a hidden gem that could uh, help lower your uh, spray painting buildings uh, game. Um, because obviously... Uh, two pounds eighty something a can uh, it's pretty good and they are um, pretty decent you know 400 mil cans so it's pretty decent and uh, I think they're a good little find and uh, uh, I'm quite interested in uh, trying them out at some point uh, so that's just something a little bit off off key that, that I had um, it's a little bit different so that's those uh, next up, uh, we're going to go for uh, the classic Napoleonics. Just uh, bring the camera down again. So, of course, uh, it wouldn't be me unless I continue on getting units for my Napoleonics. And uh, again, uh, I have a bunch of stuff in uh, so as you know by now if you've watched any of my, my last uh, recent videos um, basically my, my project is more or less coming to an end I'm basically one unit away from finishing every part of my project um, so uh, this particular bunch of stuff here from Perry's which actually came yesterday uh, is um, a regiment of light dragoons and they're in the same sort these are uh, in sort of a charging pose and th they follow the same sort of style so we have a command group we have two uh, one single pack of uh, shouldered sabers and two packs of charging sabers or raised sabers um, so that is uh, the light dragoons uh, I haven't actually opened them um, but 
I'm not going to bother. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's another unit uh, in hand, ready to finish. Uh, also, um, on again for Napoleonics, we have um, not one but two uh, packs of uh, British infantry. Uh, now, you may ask yourself, uh, why have I got two packs when I only need one? Uh, and uh, the, the truth to that is that uh, I ordered the wrong pack. <laughs> so uh, what I was after is I, I wanted my last pack uh, to be uh, a firing pose um, because um, you know my idea of, of this project is not only to to build particular divisions up or, or, or unit um, brigades up, but also to actually have um, to use as much metal as possible and, and have as many different types of uh, either companies figures or or pose figures um, so I'd kind of made my mind up that I wanted to to have a firing pose for the final uh, unit because I'm really not a fan of of, of uh, charging and I already had advancing um, so I thought yeah you know I'm, I'm gonna order them um, so uh, you know good front rank order uh, order one extra figure um, kneeling um, firing pose kneeling um, because uh, you always get two drummers uh, in uh, battalion packs and I never use two drummers um, you know sorted and I was really excited for them to come and uh, when they when they arrived uh, I ordered, somehow managed to accidentally order uh, charging uh, so of course I wasn't particularly happy at that point uh, I thought oh, you know it's, this is disastrous I really don't want to have um, charging pose figures uh, as my last guards unit so uh, you know I, I basically after a little bit of uh, cooling down after my initial uh, shock of ordering the wrong thing um, I decided to um, a few days later uh, order in the right uh, pack uh, but to tell the truth these guys aren't actually too bad um, and uh, I will use them for a future uh, British regiment um, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the figures. Uh, I just didn't want uh, a charging pose for for my final unit. Um, they uh, they're actually uh, they're actually pretty good in, in my opinion. Actually, this, this particular unit. Um, but uh, like I say, I didn't want my guards unit to, to be charging. So uh, these guys will be put in reserve um, for uh, a future uh, Napoleonic project um, because they're obviously. Uh, when I go to do my next project, a uh, Napoleonic project, um, obviously there's going to be some kind of British division involved, um, or I could theoretically turn these guys into my um, Hampshire Regiment guys, um, which is something that I just wanted to do um, off to the side. But uh, anyway, uh, glad to have them, but uh, they're not going to be used uh, quite yet. So, where's my... Oh, here we go. Okay, uh, next up we have the actual uh, correct unit. So these guys are the firing unit. Uh, now um, I have this guy here. Um, is actually from another pack. Um, I, you actually got two uh, standard bearers in the same pose, um, and I didn't. I, I don't like that. I, I like to have uh, individual officers and in, 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 uh, individual character, uh, command packs if, if possible. So uh, I swapped in uh, this guy in place of the uh, original, um, the original uh, flag, second flag bearer. Um, like I say, these guys are in firing pose. Again, uh, very cool. Um, I'm actually the thing, of course, I was worried about was uh, being able to position them up uh, and and still have their bases flush. Um, and I've actually mocked it up and I've come up with a way that that will work. Um, I also ordered uh, an extra figure as well. Um, I think it was um, an extra uh, kneeling guy with a bandaged head, which is this guy here. Um, now, the problem I came across was that um, because of the, uh, the drummer and the NCO, um, you're kind of left with an odd number of standing and kneeling troops um, so in the end I, I, I managed to to work out that um, if I move the 
uh, the drummer uh, behind uh, a kneeling guy, uh, and the same with the NCO, uh, then it actually works out. So um, that's the, the one slight change I've had to do uh, to actually uh, get them to, to sit on the bass properly. But um, overall, uh, I think they're a really cool set. Um, I guess, um, apart from the double uh, flag bearer, uh, the other disappointment was that the officer that came uh, was basically in the same position as my uh, my last guards unit. Um, let me just actually grab grab the stand to, to show you. Uh, this uh, officer here. Um, who... I mean, yeah, he's an okay figure, but I really don't like his pose. Um, and I definitely didn't want another figure exactly like him. Uh, so uh, what I did was... Um, let's put him back. Hold on. Was uh, I converted them. Uh, so basically this is how uh, the office is going to end up. Uh, I think it looks a lot better. Uh, I basically um, carved away his original sword, which was actually uh, moulded into the bottom of his leg. Um, he uh, then went to my bits box and I sorted out a uh, an old Victrix arm. Um, I'm not sure if it's French or British actually, but either way it's an infantry officer's sword. Um, cut the hand off of course uh, with the now slightly stubbier sword because the actual tip broke off. Um, cut the, the hand off and I used uh, these um, long nosed pliers to bend his arm up and then I reattached uh, the plastic hand uh, with the sword and I think it um, makes a much much better officer um, and of course makes him unique uh, which is what, what I want. Uh, so that is uh, the officer, and uh, that is uh, the firing posed uh, chaps that are going to be uh, my last unit of uh, guards. Let's put these guys away. And of course I did have... Uh, the extra guy to replace the second drummer. Okay. Right, next up uh, we have um, a small uh, order from uh, Mezzes Minis here. Um, of course, utilising the um, the discount code from uh, the Plastic Crack uh, podcast. Um, I, I went to the site. I've, I've had my eye on uh, Avon Post guys for, for, for a fair while. Um, they are quite pricey. Um, I think most of these guys were £2 each. Um, and of course, a lot of them were out of stock. So uh, I had to be quite selective in, in, in what, I, uh, what, what I actually wanted. Um, so basically what I ended up getting uh, was a um, an infantry officer. These of course are the metal, uh, the metal versions. Um, I don't think uh, there's many um, of the actual Napoleonic figures that are, are actually made out of resin. I think the cavalry are. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's basically a standing infantry officer. He's got his two arms and his scabbard uh, separate. Uh, very nice, uh, very nice sculpt. Um, can't fault fault it at all. Um, so that is the infantry officer. Uh, we also have a uh, an artillery officer, and he comes with a hand holding a telescope, uh, his sword uh, sword and scabbard, and a uh, his other arm. And again. Uh, amazing uh, sculpting and finally as far as figures go uh, a sapper uh, this guy is really cool he 
comes with uh, his front of his apron, his backpack, his uh, sapper's sword and uh, bayonet frog, and, um, and scabbard, and also his uh, musket or carbine, and also uh, the axe, which is actually positioned uh, to slide behind his backpack, which is really cool. Um, so I think this figure will be really cool, and of course he'll just go into like a normal uh, line regiment uh, eventually. So yeah, really happy with those. And now the last thing that I got uh, was a couple of the uh, the bronze eagles. Um, absolutely beautiful little things. Uh, to tell the truth, a little bit too small uh, for my liking uh, because I tend to use uh, front rank eagles. And they're actually quite a bit bigger, but you can see the detail on these. Uh, they're absolutely amazing, and, and like I say, I think they're made out of. See the brass or bronze? I, I can't remember exactly which, uh, but they are uh, amazing little things. Uh, and of course, they, they're quite pricey at two pound fifty each. Uh, so I won't be uh, replacing all my eagles with them. For, that's for sure. Uh, but I just wanted to give them a go. Uh, I thought when I ordered them uh, I might replace the two eagles with my Imperial Guard, but um, they're, they're just a little bit too small uh, for my liking. Uh, but they'll go into, I'll probably end up using them in uh, line infantry, um, or possibly cavalry. Um, but yeah, very cool. So that's my little order from, uh, from Mezzas Minis. And now, uh, the final Napoleonic uh, pickup. Um, you, you heard about the uh, the whole Wayland Games for Ciardo with um, my Imperial Guard cannons. Well, eventually I ordered them from uh, Warlord Games and they came a couple of days later. Uh, so I have at last got the battery uh, to finish my uh, Grenadiers or Pede Division. Uh, happy to say that these guys are made out of metal and not made out of uh, that, that resin uh, which is something I was a little bit worried about um, I also have added uh, some extra figures in uh, to, to bolster the crews up um, these guys of course are going to be uh, the marine auxiliary battery and I came across uh, originally uh, in my Imperial Guard book uh, that shows their uniforms as being uh, basically exactly the same as any other Imperial Guard gunner with the old uh, the, the the bearskin caps or the bearskin hats um, but the uh, the French website um, Saint, -Jer Saint Jean or Saint Jerome whatever it's called uh, you know the one I'm talking about um, they have them wearing normal shakos so uh, what I did for one of the uh, the extra crew that I added was uh, I actually added a uh, because this cannon's being um, uh, laid up uh, into position um, so I used uh, one of the spare guys from my extra artillery crew uh, who actually has a shako um, to actually add to this crew uh, that, that are all in their sort of bearskin type caps uh, and then the second one uh, the firing one uh, has got the uh, the artillery officer uh, my imperial guard artillery officer uh, that I've had for a long time in front rank uh, added and he'll go with that battery or that particular gun so very happy to have those and uh, you know that's now I've got the stuff in for finishing three of the uh, four units that I've got to finish uh, the last being um, my French Dragoons I've been after um, now I think um, that the uh, French Dragoons are being uh, a new batch of them is, must be being made up because uh, a lot of places are either out of stock or just don't have them um, and uh, I mean obviously you can find a few on uh, eBay but they're, they're, some of them were ridiculously expensive like 20 I think one was like 29.99 it's like yeah, you've got to be kidding um, so I thought well you know I can basically go plastic or I can go uh, go to front rank and get uh, some uh, metal ones but, um, so uh, again uh, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing I haven't actually ordered them yet uh, but uh, I'm glad to have actually found a place that does actually do metal uh, French Dragoons because Parry's actually don't um, which was a little bit of a surprise um, I, thought they, they, I thought they would 
Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's that. And I think we're getting to the end now. Uh, we've just got uh, one final genre to go through. Um, now, again, I'm, I think I have mentioned that uh, I, that I planned to uh, do uh, an army uh, for each side of um, of uh, Team Yankee World War Three. Um, I've I had I've had the uh, the American starter set. Uh, for a while now, um, I haven't actually uh, done much on them, to tell the truth. Uh, but I've also obviously picked up the American book, and uh, yes, uh, within the last few days, uh, I also picked up uh, the Soviet book, uh, which seemed to took a bit of time to actually appear. Um, I actually got this uh, this from from Wayland, and uh, I also got the uh, the new Soviet uh, starter box, uh, which I'll bring in uh, into here. Um, so let's just uh, I'll just kind of zoom out a little bit on this thing because uh, it's not going to fit. I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod. So I ordered these from Wayland, and uh, they literally came uh, two days later because they're in stock. Uh, so it goes to show that Wayland aren't all uh, slow all the time. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, like my original plans were to uh, base a small army off of each of the. Uh, two sides uh, starter forces. Um, the American one had been out for a while, uh, so I picked that one up quite easily. Uh, but the Soviet one it seemed to have taken its time to uh, appear um, uh, on uh, Wayland's site, and um, I got this for a very good price, uh, twenty percent off. Um, I think it ended up being like fifty something pounds uh, instead of like seventy something. Um, so a really good uh, little deal, and it's uh, it's quite a different set compared to the Americans. I mean, the Americans set only had like two Apaches. Um, this this particular set has got some Frogfoots and some uh, Hinds, as well as uh, a platoon of uh, T80s. Uh, we have uh, a couple of B BMP3s. And we have some uh, anti-tank uh, BRDM sevens, and also uh, some uh, a couple of SAM variant. Um, I can't remember their their, their exact uh, designation. Um, what are they called? Oh, not BRDM sevens, BRDM two. Sorry. Um, so we have some uh, Gaskin uh, anti-aircraft vehicles, and Spandrel uh, anti-tank variant. Uh, and of course, also you can turn them into. Uh, BRDM2 recon vehicles if you really want um, but that's the choice you get out of the sprue um, and the, that's basically the stuff that you get in, it, in the box so yeah very happy to, to have that um, like I say um, I've almost got everything uh, that I need uh, now for this project um, I've had a little trouble hunting down infantry um, I actually uh, found uh, I actually decided to get some plastic soldier company uh, Cold War Russians, um, because the uh, the Battlefront ones are more or less uh, out of stock everywhere, and they have to be ordered in. And I didn't really want to wait months for, for them to actually come in. So I think they're being rebranded as well. Um, so that's kind of adding a certain amount of time um, to uh, to them actually getting things in stock, to, to the shops getting the stuff in stock. Um, of course. Uh, I think I have mentioned these uh, again before, uh, but I'll just bring them up because we're on Team Yankee uh, side. I did manage to, to eventually get a mech platoon of uh, American infantry and also uh, two Hueys. Um, but, I mean, this stuff uh, took about four months, three or four months to, to actually come in stock. Um, and I think it's more or less going to be the same sort of amount of time, no matter where you order it from. Uh, because they they just uh, they're, they seem to be rebranding everything, so I'm sure that most American stuff uh, is probably done by now. I would have thought, uh, but I think most of the, a lot of the Russian stuff isn't. So you, uh, again, if you order stuff in, um, then you, you're going to have to wait uh, quite long periods for for them to actually get them in stock. So that is that, and uh, now to finish off this lot, this massive haul, um, I have a uh, one final thing. Um, which is uh, this book. Uh, this is a book I've been after for a long time. Um, I've actually got the 
uh, by the same author, the uh, British Artillery uh, book, uh, done by him. Uh, now, whenever you tried to hunt this book down uh, before, um, we're talking like, you know, maybe four months ago, five months ago, um, it was basically out of print and uh, you can only find second-hand versions and they were ridiculously expensive. Um, but I just happened to check uh, probably about a month ago, um, maybe a little bit less, um, and uh, they, it appears that there's now a revised edition, um, which is, uh, now I'm not sure if they've actually increased the size of the book uh, and changed the layout, but it's a much bigger book uh, now than um, what the uh, British Napoleonic Field Artillery book was, and I've got a feeling that this the previous printing was the same uh, format as the uh, the uh, the artillery book. Um, but this book is uh, basically amazing. Um, if you if you're doing any sort of British Napoleonic uh, infantry, uh, then this book uh, is for you because it's basically got all the information about every uh, British cavalry unit um, and uh, infantry unit. And the types, uh, the way that their uniforms changed uh, throughout uh, the period. Um, now, they seem to go from uh, like the late uh, 17th century going up to uh, either uh, 1815 or sort of the circa 1812, a lot of them. Um, it's got a section on every uh, regiment. Um, it's also got blurb on them as well, some, some written information, and it's got a really interesting section on the tartans and the highland regiments uh, so it gives you like a really close in picture of every type of tartan uh, so to help you out uh, with your painting and like I said it also covers uh, cavalry um, so you have your um, like for instance here's the uh, first regiment of lifeguards um, so it covers uh, all the cavalry units too uh, it's a really really uh, good reference book to have so I was very happy to have that and that is basically the end of the haul um, like I say it was a massive haul um, lots of stuff uh, for future projects lots of stuff for finishing off uh, my current project uh, so yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed it um, I've, again I've had uh, I've probably had to do like four takes of this video uh, because I kept messing up or it didn't feel right. Um, yeah, so I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.